Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in this lesson we would take a look at a little bit of an advanced technique. And this is sort of a question I get all the time. You know, can you show us some more advanced techniques? Well, here's one that I do all the time. And it's creating something as simple as a list. Now, in most cases, lists, when they appear, you know, in this case, we're going to do a bullet point list. And what's going to happen is, is that each one of the bullet points is going to appear, and then the actual points that go with them are going to slide in from the right-hand side. And we're going to want to animate each one of these elements. Now, in most cases, people go through and do a lot more work than they really need to do. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can animate what might seem to be something that's very complex very quickly, and very easily. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony. Obviously, Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there, and I already happen to have a graphics bin all set to go. What we're going to do is navigate up to Clip. I'm going to come down to New Title. I'm just going to give Symphony a second to prompt me here. I'm just going to select the standard title tool. Nothing fancy about this. Now, what I'm going to do is just create four bullet points. We're just going to sort of position each one just a little bit offset from the other one. And then once we have the title saved, we're going to save out just one title, not multiple titles, just one. And then we're going to get in and animate each element separately. Okay, so let's do this. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to type in each bullet point. So let's just type in, um, you know, we'll just call them even just bullet point one bullet point one. And what we're going to do is just position this roughly where we're going to want to go. So we'll put it about, I don't know, maybe about here, I think. What I'm going to do is copy and paste this. We're just going to bring it down a little bit. We're going to bring it over a little bit, just like that. I'm going to copy and paste. We're going to bring it down a little bit, bring it over a little bit. It's not too bad. Copy, paste, bring it down a little bit, bring it over a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create the actual little bullet points here, just like such. And what we'll do is just use the up and down arrows just to position this roughly where we're going to want it to go. Looking very nice. I'm going to copy and paste this. We'll position it again pretty close to where we're going to want it to go. I'm going to paste again. Drag and drop. That's not too bad. And paste again. I'll just position this one right here. It's looking very good. And I think what I did forget to do is put in a title. We're going to call it This is How We Do Bullet Points. Okay, so we're just going to position that. Maybe we'll just shrink it down ever so slight. We'll put it at about 40. That's looking pretty good. And like I said, I'm obviously creating this off the top of my head, but you see where I'm going with this. Now, what I'm going to do is just select these, and I'm just going to reposition them probably about there. I think that's pretty good. And we'll just center this up a little bit more. I think that's pretty close, and I think I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. Now, like I said, in a lot of cases, what most people would do is they're going to get in and create a separate title for each element that they want to animate. Now, I'm kind of doing that technique, but not really. How I'm doing that technique is I'm actually going to use the 3D tool to do this technique. I'm not going to use the title tool. I'm just going to take my title, save it out just like this. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the title tool. I'm going to save it. We'll just call this bullet points master. We'll save it into our bin. There it is right there. What we're going to do is I think we're just going to create this about, I don't know, we'll just maybe make it about 20 seconds here. Let's just go plus 20 seconds here and mark that as an out point. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to drop that into my timeline. Now what we're actually going to need here is nine layers to do this one transition or this one animation. Now why nine? Well I'm going to need one layer for how is this, or this is how we do bullet points. I'm going to need one layer for each one of these bullets and one layer for each one of the points. Now I called each one point one, point two, and what I should probably have done is I'm just going to edit this title here. I probably should have called them one, two, three, four just to go two, we'll go three, we'll go four. Very good. I'll just save this. Now remember, by me updating it over here in the bin and not editing it over here in the timeline, it's going to update it here, but I will have to drop it back into my timeline. So we'll just hit T on the keyboard, hit B to drop that in. I'm just going to delete my audio because I don't need it. Now again, I said I'm going to need nine layers. Now, it might sound a little bit daunting, but once you see how simple this actually is, I guarantee you, again, this is a technique you're going to be using all the time. So what we're going to do, first of all, is let's worry about, first of all, this first layer is going to be our top title. This is how we do bullet points. And the next four layers are going to be each one of the bullets. So let's do that. I'm going to create four new layers, just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 
this title and we're going to drop it into each one of them here. Just like this. Now how do I keep this all straight? Because now I've got five layers on top of the other and I don't know how to differentiate each one from each other. Well here's how we're going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode. I'm going to select the bottom layer only. What I'm going to do is just monitor that bottom layer and most people would actually use the just the standard title uh, cropping, but I don't like to do that. And the reason I don't like to do that is because I'm not big on the slider bars. What I'm going to do is promote this to 3D so that way I can simply come up and select the crop tool and quickly crop things however I want, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is once I've actually cropped it the way I want, I'm just going to delete that keyframe because I always find it annoying that that's, uh, that keyframe has been added there because I don't need it. So now what we want to do is we want to isolate each one of those bullet points. So let's do that. Now what's going to happen is once I start changing layers, you're going to see now that I can come in and I can do the exact same thing. I can select 3D, I can select the crop tool, and I can actually just get in and just crop out what I want. Now the only thing that gets tricky is what if I wanted to start with the last one? Let me just come up to the top here. Because it gets you know to be a bit tricky seeing everything on the screen and not being able to isolate just one layer. Well we can not actually isolate one layer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control uh, on Windows, Command on the Mac, and I'm going to click on the little monitor and by doing that what I've actually done is I've soloed this channel or this layer. So now what I do to this layer I don't see trickle down to all the layers below it. So you'll see that when I do this I only see just this one bullet point that we're affecting. If I hit control and I click on the monitor again, you'll see everything reappears. So let's just go through and I'm just going to quickly crop all this out here. You'll see it defaults to scaling. So let's just make sure we don't worry about that. There we go. I think we only have one more because I think I already did that first one here, but I guess we're about to find out in two seconds here. There we go. And what do I have now? I now have just the bullet points. Okay. Now, if you'll remember in one of the previous lessons I did, I used a great feature called Fade Effect. Now, what I should have done here is deleted those pesky keyframes. Because that's going to come into play once we have the word, once we have the bullet points, they're going to be sliding in. So what I'm going to do is just delete them all. We'll just make sure they're all gone here which I thought I got them all. There we go. Did I get them all? I got them all. Perfect. So let's use that fade effect command. What I'm going to do is hit Y on the keyboard to step out of effects mode and with those four layers selected I'm simply going to hit F12 which is my shortcut for fade effect. Now if you don't have it mapped you're not going to find it standard on your composer window unless you come into the hamburger. I believe it's actually in the hamburger. Let me just see. There it is right there. Fade effect. Now the only catch is, is that you obviously don't want to be coming back to the hamburger in the middle all the time. So what you can do of course is come up to tools, you can come down to the command palette. If you come into the effects section you're actually going to be able to find it right here. So you can map it to your keyboard or map it to the composer or map it to the top of your timeline. I highly suggest doing it because it's a command that I use all the time. Okay, so again F12. We're going to set the fade up to be, sure, why don't we just leave it as 12 frames. So once I have that set, what I'm going to do is I probably should have done that for all of them here. I'll just set this actually, the first one here, to be 24 frames. Why not? We'll have it fade in for one second. And then what I'm going to do is once it fades in for one second, I'm going to give it a bit of breathing room. So let's just go plus 48. So I'll give it, you know, another second here uh, to sit up there by itself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start having these layers come in. And all I'm going to do now is simply select the layers. I'm going to hold control to snap to my bar here. I'm going to hit plus 24. We're just going to deselect one of the layers. Again, hold control to snap. Again, hold shift to deselect one of the layers. We'll go plus 24. Now you're probably thinking, Kev, why are you doing this? This just seems really weird. Well, believe it or not, what I've just done is I've now actually have had each one of our bullet points fade on, just kind of like such. So you can have your bullet points fade on or you can have a bullet point fade on and then you can have each element come on at the same time. So you see how this works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have my bullet points fade on and then I'm going to have my words slide in. You know, why not? Just because I can. Okay, so you'll see now that I've now got these layers actually staggered beyond the end. Now the big decision I have to make is where do I actually want this to end? Now in this case I think what I'm going to do is just have it end at 20 seconds. So I could just select that area and just simply hit lift and remove it all out. But if I wanted to extend all of these elements down, all I have to do is make sure all of my layers are selected and I'm simply going to hit the extend key. Now in this case I don't have enough uh, of the element here. Let's just see which one it's not liking here. 
It could just be the bottom one. Yeah, it's, oh, no, it actually did them all. Look at that. So there we go. Let's come up to F4. Have that as the out point. We'll just hit out. Yeah, see, it doesn't like it. But what we can do here is do it one at a time. Sometimes Symphony is just picky and won't do them all. There we go at the same time. So you see, sometimes it just likes to do them one layer at a time. Okay. So now what we're going to need again is we're going to need four more layers to have our elements sliding in. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my animation here, and what we're going to do is come down 24 frames. I'm going to hit 1, 2, 3, 4, Control and Y to add four new layers here. And we're going to start right here. Again, we're going to come down to the end, hit B on the keyboard. Again, T to select that entire clip. We're just going to do the exact same thing. Hit T again, hit B, hit T again, hit B, and there is our four layers that's going to make up our bullet point. Now again, exact same technique as we just did. We're going to promote this element. Let me just bring the effects editor over here. We're going to promote this element again. Crop. You'll see. A lot of this might seem like it's repetitive work. But what I'm going to do here is just delete as I go. And you know what? It is repetitive work. But once you see how quick it is to go through and isolate elements like this, I would rather isolate them like this than do it inside the title tool and attempt to create nine different titles. That can just be frustrating. Now, I'm going to go back and just double check that I deleted all of my keyframes here. Just like such. And we got one more here. Very nice. And what we now have is all of our separate elements. Now, what we're also going to do here, like I said, is we're just going to remove that. Come down here, remove such. Come down here, remove such. And we're going to do a very similar technique to the one that I just showed you. So what's going to happen now is that each one of these elements is going to slide onto the screen. Now, like I said, we're going to set this up in a similar way to how we set the bullet points up. The only difference is I'm not going to use the fade effect command. We're going to do this manually. So let's just come back to the beginning here. I'm going to add a keyframe right here, and I'm going to go plus 24 to go down a second. We're going to add another keyframe. What we're going to do is we're going to select this first keyframe. I'm going to come over here to the effects editor. We're going to turn on position, and I think we'll put the X position somewhere around 850, just to make sure that we're all the way off the frame. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to do the exact same thing again with the next one. I'm going to hit the Add Keyframe button. I'm going to hit plus 24. Again, Add Keyframe. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Turn position on. We're going to come to the X value, go 850, slide it off the frame. Now, obviously, like I said, depending on where elements are, you might need to adjust that X value. But for the purposes of what we're doing, I think we're going to be okay. So the exact same technique again. And let's just select that first keyframe, make sure position is turned on here. We're going to go 850, slide that off the frame. And of course, last but certainly not least, this last bullet point, again, exactly the same thing. You see, like I said, seems like I've said it a few times now, a lot of repetitive stuff, but in the end, it's just a very quick way to work. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Now, again, what I'm going to do is just simply step out of effects mode by hitting Y on the keyboard. And again, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go plus 24. I'm going to select my segment mode, the lift segment mode. I'm going to just going to hold control. We're going to snap to this edit point. Again, the exact same thing. Deselect plus 24. Again, slow ups, let's hold control, not shift, just slide that down. Again, I'm going to hit shift to deselect. We're going to hit plus 24. And again, hold control to snap to that edit point. And of course, I'm going to come down now, just deselect segment mode. We're just going to remove this little sort of extra bit from the end here, just like such. And what we have now is each one of the bullet points fade in. And then each one of the elements comes in. Now you're going to see things start to disappear. Reason being is because I've reached the maximum amount of layers that I can play back in real time before I need to render some layers. So let's just render some of the layers here just so that I can actually play this back and show it to you. In real time, I'm just going to pick more layers than I probably need to render just because I want to make sure that this is going to play back properly. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that if I had a title that actually stretched over the top of everything, you know, for example, if I put the, this is how we do bullet points, uh, main title on the top, all I'd have to do is render that one layer. And by rendering that one layer, it's going to render everything that's below it as well. So it's always important to keep in mind the stacking order that you have things. In this case, it doesn't matter because these are simply titles. So we'll just give Symphony a second here to finish rendering these elements. I think we got one more. There we go. You'll notice they get faster because it's rendering, obviously, the longer one first and getting shorter as it goes. Let's see. Was that the last one? Yes, it was. Let's come back to the beginning. Simply hit play here. 
There we go. Bullet points. And here come each one of the elements. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. So I hope you see that creating lists and doing, you know, a little bit more complex animation inside of MIDI Composer and Symphony is very easy. Really, the big choice comes where you have to decide, do you want to do your layout, you know, individually from the title tool, save each one of those elements out and then render them, you know, in your timeline or animate them in your timeline? Or do you want to do the technique I did, which is just basically lay everything out in the title tool and then come in and use the 3D tool? Whether you're going to use the title tool or the 3D tool, they're both very powerful tools. Really, at the end of the day, it's what you are most comfortable working with. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.